Let's follow the graphical approach to find out the operating point when n channel JFAT is biased using self-bias configuration. In the previous lecture, we followed the mathematical approach to find out the operating point and now in this lecture, we will follow the graphical approach. The first thing we have to do is to plot the transfer curve of the device. We will plot the transfer curve of the device which is the plot between drain current ID and the input voltage VGS and like fixed bias configuration we will use Shockley's equation to plot the transfer curve. In case of junction field effect transistors two parameters are already given. The first one is saturated drain current and the second one is pinch off voltage and let's say in this case IDSS is equal to 8 milliamp and VP is equal to minus 6 volt and now we will make ID equal to 0 amp in this equation the drain current ID is equal to 0 amp and this will give us VGS equal to VP so we have the first point when ID is equal to 0 amp VGS is equal to VP and VP is minus 6 volt so VGS is equal to minus 6 volt and now we will make VGS equal to 0 volt VGS is equal to 0 volt when you put VGS equal to 0 volt here you will have ID equal to IDSS the drain current is equal to IDSS when VGS is 0 ID is equal to IDSS IDSS is equal to 8 milliamp this means ID will have the value equal to 8 milliamp this is IDSS and this voltage here is pinch of voltage VP so we have two points and we need one more point to plot the transfer curve and now we will make VGS equal to VP by 2 VP by 2 this means minus 6 by 2 so VGS is equal to minus 3 and when you put VGS equal to minus 3 volt in this equation you will have ID the drain current equal to IDSS over 4 which is equal to 8 milliamp divided by 4 or we can write 2 milliamp so the third point is having the x coordinate equal to minus 3 volt and the y coordinate equal to 2 milliamp let's plot the third point I will extend the 2 milliamp point like this and minus 3 volt point like this and the intersection is the third point this intersection is the third point and now I will join these three points to have the transfer curve I will quickly join these three points like this to have the transfer curve of N channel JFAT when maximum drain current IDSS is equal to 8 milliamp and the pinch of voltage is equal to minus 6 volt so this is the transfer curve and if you remember the last lecture we obtained input voltage VGS applying Kirchhoff's voltage law in the input loop and it was equal to minus ID RS this was VGS in the last case and uh, this is the equation of a straight line if you remember the equation of a straight line it is equal to Y equal to MX plus C and here in this case VGS is X ID is Y so I will rearrange this equation to write it in the form of Y equal to MX plus C after rearrangement I have ID equal to minus 1 over RS multiplied with VGS so we have Y equal to minus 1 by RS is M which is the slope VGS is X and C the intercept is equal to 0 and when intercept is equal to 0 the straight line passes through the origin so this straight line will pass through the origin and to plot the straight line we need two points so let's try to find out two points using this equation I will first make VGS equal to 0 volt I will first make 
VGS equal to zero volt and when VGS is equal to zero volt the drain current ID is equal to zero amp you can put VGS equal to zero here and you will have ID equal to zero amp so the first point is the origin itself the line is passing through the origin and now we will find out the second point and for this I will make drain current ID equal to IDSS over 2 and when this happens VGS is equal to minus IDSS RS over 2 and uh, in this you can see IDSS is known to us it is equal to 8 milliamp RS is also fixed it is also known to us it is given in the circuit over 2 so this value is fixed so we know the x coordinate and we also know the y coordinate because it is equal to 4 milliamp in this way we have the second point the first point is origin and now we will plot the second point the y coordinate is equal to 4 the y coordinate is equal to 4 so I will extend it like this and let's say the x coordinate is somewhere between minus 5 and minus 4 we don't know the value of rs so i'm assuming vgs is here and then i will extend it like this so this is the second point and now if i join the first point and the second point i will have a straight line i will have a straight line which is id equal to minus 1 over rs multiplied with vgs where minus 1 minus 1 over rs is the slope the slope of this line is minus 1 over rs and the intersection of this straight line and the transfer curve of the device is the operating point so this point here is the operating point the q point and now we will find out the y coordinate of the operating point and the x coordinate of the operating point so this is i d q and this is this is v g s q so in this way we have the operating point and i think this lecture is clear to you there is one homework problem and the homework problem is related to the straight line we have just drawn if i increase resistance r s let me slide the board the homework problem if i increase resistance rs what will happen to the slope tell me first thing what will happen to the slope and the second thing what will happen to the operating point what will happen to the operating point will operating point move towards the y axis or it will move towards the x axis so these are the two problems once you have your answer post it in comment section you have to tell me the effect on increasing resistance rs the effect on slope and the effect on operating point and you can compare this approach with the mathematical approach this approach is a lot easier as compared to the mathematical approach we don't have to solve the quadratic equation in this case we only have to plot the transfer curve and the straight line and the intersection will give us the operating point. So this is all. See you in the next lecture.